Oh, the Lord is so good. Faithful. Um, the title of my message is Replacing Condemnation for Truth and Freedom. And the key scripture is one that probably most of you do know, and that is, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Romans 8.1. Amen. Amen. All right, so... The first step to letting go of our condemnation is accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we accept what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we are forgiven. He washes away and takes away the guilt, the shame, the worthlessness, um, our sins. He doesn't hold those against us anymore. And we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 7 from the Good News Translation says, For by the blood of Christ we are set free. Yes. The blood is very powerful. Yes. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God. After we accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we can work on us. And Part of that process is healing and deliverance. And Jesus can do it in an instant, but normally he doesn't. He walks us through a process of healing and transformation. And the Bible gives us a great example that he doesn't do it right in an instant, always. Because with Paul and a thorn in his side, and as much revelation and that he had from the Lord, the Lord did not remove that thorn. We don't know what it is, but he prayed and asked it to be removed. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. Sometimes when we're going through the healing process, we want to get to the other side of our pain, and we have to walk through some things. And uh, we know it's a spiritual battle because we live in this fallen world. And the devil is a duplicator of the spiritual realm. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But we are on the winning side. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, something that the enemy tries to put on us are lies. And those can be through emotions, feelings, our identity, how we feel about ourselves and our core belief systems of who we are. Um, some examples are shame, insecurities, fear, anger, resentment, judgment, criticalness, self-hatred. These are things that the devil tries to put on us. Some of these things come from a spiritual background. There's a spirit behind it. And sometimes we take it on as our own. And these emotions can operate, these spirits can operate in our lives. And maybe sometimes we don't even really realize that it's happening. Some of the lies that we might believe are, I'm no good. I will never amount to anything. These next three are, we're agreeing with the devil and what he's saying. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're fat. These are all lies from the pit of hell. Lies come in to our lives many times through words that have been spoken over us, abuse that we've experienced, and uh, maybe it's been family members who care about you, love you a lot, but still have some of their own issues, so they're speaking words that are not of God. And these words can even be spoken to you all the way back to when you were in the womb. The lies can also come through bloodline and generational curses because they could be generational curses that your family has passed on to you. They could come through our own sin, our own actions. And if they're a generational curse and it's been a sin that somebody in your family or generations past has, has 
struggled with, then most likely it'll be worse for you unless you break off and get delivered and set free and get saved. The enemy knows his rights. He uses familiar spirits to study us. And he can see places that he can tread in our lives. He might even be aware of your genealogy. So, and I've already said that about the sin. So, being attached to a generational curse that it can become stronger with each generation. But we can also have generational blessings. Amen. Right? And when we live for the Lord, and we're showing our family members and our children the blessing of the Lord, then those are generational blessings. Yeah. And that's what we want to give. Yeah. But we still have to be aware of the spiritual realm and know that that's, uh, it's a spiritual battle. And we still have good news. Jesus came in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. <laughs> yep. Through the blood of Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. And he has given us the authority to overcome the dark forces. Yeah. We just have to practice our rights. Yeah. It's up to us. When we're born again, we become Jesus Christ's property. He went to the cross. He paid the price for us to have that and to have the freedom that he wants us to have. The darkness really has no right to cross over. Right. But they don't follow the law. <laughs> Can we still struggle with darkness being born again? Yes. We actually, it could be a stronger battle after becoming born again because we become a threat to the enemy. Now he's after us. And the enemy will trespass if we let them. So I'm going to kind of give you an example of how the enemy works. I'm going to use a natural example of how it applies in the spiritual realm. Say you're at home and you're relaxing in your living room. You're not looking outside, but someone, a stranger, decides to, tr to cross on your property. They're looking around, walking around, but you are not aware of it. You don't even know they're there. They see how far and how long they can cross over onto this place they know not, they don't belong. They take off, deciding they better not get caught. But only to return again. They keep doing this, and after a while, they have a path that they have created. This person now feels like they have the right to this path. It's familiar to them. And that's part of the familiar spirit also, which will be another teaching. So this can happen in the spiritual realm. We sometimes don't even realize the rights we have given the enemy in our lives. Now, as new believers, we need to become aware of things in the spiritual realm and be educated and get good teaching and learn about these things. And also, as long-time Christians, we need to not let our guard down, because sometimes we will. And we need to continue to pray. And another part is we need to evaluate our walk and keep our house clean. Amen. So basic house cleaning. Who likes cleaning house? But if we don't, the clutter and the everything gets stacked up, right? And so with our spiritual life, we need to do house cleaning. It's basic spiritual maintenance, and it is a necessity for the Christian life. Yeah. We, are, we are made up of mind, will, and emotions. Our soul, that's our soul, and that's where we store things. We've all been through some things. We all have that testimony. We all have things that we can work on in ourselves. And a lot of those things are hurts, wounds, 
feelings, pains, darkness, and those can be stored in our soul. But we can be set free because Jesus has come to set us free. Amen. And the Word of God in John 8, 31 through 32 from the New King James Version says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. And the truth, and, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But it's still, if you're reading that scripture and you're breaking it down, it's a process. Because it's telling you, if you abide in me. So there's a part that we have to do to continue in having that freedom. It's not just freely given once and bam, it's over and it's, we're just walking around praising the Lord and everything's great. We've got to keep processing ourselves. So the Amplified version, I went ahead and went to that, because sometimes that Amplified will really amplify it, right? <laughs> so here's the same scripture. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. Yeah. Lord. Once you get set free, darkness has to go. But remember to protect those doorways. Yeah. Reflecting back on the intruder, he's going to try to come on those paths. He knows they're there. He knows your weaknesses. The enemy can be nowhere kind of entice you. So protect those doorways. And we do that by staying in our word. Right. And deliverance is for all of us. Acknowledging the areas we need to overcome. It's an ongoing process. We don't get just delivered once. Deliverance is ongoing. We if we, we should allow the Holy Spirit to point things out. We get walking in this flesh, flesh rises up, spiritual stuff comes in, and we need to get it out. So listen to the Holy Spirit, and He'll gently tell you things. And uh, praise the Lord. So, testimony. I want to share a testimony, and... Uh, I know I shared a testimony last time I shared my message, but this is a little different. But I have lots of testimonies because the Lord has done so much, right? Because God is good, so good. Amen. Thank you. So sharing this testimony does bring me to a place of vulnerability. And I don't share it to blame or point fingers. And um, I say that because it comes from my family line. And uh, I love my family dearly but they lack knowledge of the truth. So, this is still my testimony and something that the Lord has processed through me. So, um, my parents were not married when I was conceived, and I was not planned by my earthly parents, but definitely planned by, by God. Amen. Yeah. There were words spoken over me when the news was delivered about my coming into the world words of rejection, that I was a mistake, that I wasn't wanted. Not only did it happen when I was in the womb, but these stories were told to me most of my childhood. The uproar and how certain people act and what they said and this happened and all that. So, I took that in. We have to be careful what words we speak to our children. Because Little children's spirits are, are very precious, yes. and the words can affect them. Amen. So there was definitely a spirit of rejection that came in, and that was a spirit of rejection where the hurt and some of the wounds were stored in my soul. I was also verbally abused in my childhood. I was put down, told ugly things, which were lies from the enemy. Yeah. As a child, these lies went into my mind, my will, and my emotions, and it became a part of my belief system. It became a part of my identity, 
and I believed these lies. These are areas that I had to work on, and I had to work to change my belief of who I am. I had to study, the, uh, study God's Word and reprogram my mind. The negative thoughts would come up all the time, and I would just put that condemnation on myself, even after being born again. Why aren't you even no good? You shouldn't have done that. If I make a little mistake, I'd be so hard on myself. And it was because of the beliefs of my core belief of who I was. And they were lies. They were attached to lies. I had to dig down to the very root of that lie and identify that lie and bring that out and replace it with Christ. And I have some handouts at the end because I like to give resources to people. <laughs> and this was something that I used early on in my walk with the Lord and it's um, compiled by Neil Anderson. It's who I am in Christ. And it's just basically scriptures that we can build up ourselves because we have to build up ourselves in the Lord. And when these thoughts come in, we have to cast them down. We have to cast them down and say, that's not of God, and we have to identify that, and we have to say, no, I will not receive those thoughts. I'm not going to, that's not, I'm not taking that on as my own. And we have to use our sword. We have to use our weapons. You know, um, for where I, the, the uh, profession that I work in, um, helping people come out of addictions and working in treatment, and they're just now getting their lives together. A lot of them aren't even, you know, looking to the Lord. It's spiritual warfare. So I'm going into the trenches, right? So, you know, uh, yeah, you have to be able to do warfare. You have to be able to pray, you know, and when you make mistakes, you have to recognize you can't be perfect, but also that we don't have to agree with those things that the enemy is trying to put on us. And, um, I'm going to share just a little bit about how I pray when I feel like I'm in spiritual warfare. And uh, it's like, man, it's struggling. It's like I'm having a hard time. And it's like, you know, I, Lord, Lord, help me, Lord. I just thank you and praise you, Lord God, that I am a child of you, Lord God, that I have been bought for, with a price, Lord. That, Lord God, that you protect me, Lord God, that I put on the full armor of God, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that I have the belt of truth on, Lord God, that distinguishes and tells me what those lies are, and I can see those, Lord God. I thank you that I have the righteous, the wretch righteousness plate of righteousness, Lord God, and that I'm righteous in you, not of my own, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that I have the gospel piece of shoes, Lord God, and everywhere I walk, Lord God, I have peace in my life, and my enemies scatter because they, they can't stand who I am because they know I have Christ in me. I thank you, Lord God, that I have my shield of faith, Lord God, and I put up my shield of faith, Lord God, when the fiery God is trying to come my way, and I thank you that my shield even has flames of fire coming off of it, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, that I have the sword of the Spirit, Lord God, which is the Word of God, Lord God, and I can speak the Word, and I can say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Lord, I have the victory, Lord God. I have the Lord God. I have the victory, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, right? 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your truth, Lord God, and thank you for your freedom. So, um, yeah. My question to you is, what have you received in your life? What words have been spoken over you? What are your core beliefs about yourself? Do you believe lies about who you are? Do you know who you are in Christ? Amen. Have you taken the word from your head to your heart? Amen. I always like to challenge my thinking with biblical truth. We can have mindsets which can affect our behaviors. So what your mind thinks, your behavior is going to walk out. Mindsets are thought patterns. And we can identify our mindsets that don't line up with the word of God then hopefully we will want to change them. When we acknowledge our behaviors, self-condemnation can try and come in. Self-condemnation comes from the root of our lies. We can expose those lies with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ, and sometimes we do need help from the body of Christ. I do want to tag on to last time when I was um, sharing um, I shared in my last testimony about the theophostics and about bringing truth into darkness and praying, and that's a really good process. It's basically, you just pray and say, Lord, show me and take me back as far as you want me to go and show me something, and then you ask him to reveal the, the lies there and bring the lies to the light, and then Jesus will speak to you through that. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about getting help from others because I said that that was important. And one of the things I do want to bring to bring up is you have to be careful who you get help from. There are so many theories out there. There are so many philosophies. There are so many counselors that when you're going into there, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what spirit's behind that. So biblical counseling programs, things like that, that's what I recommend. So I just wanted to say that. Um, so I want to give another scripture Colossians 2, 6 through 10 as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith if we have those roots of lies we've got to bring those roots out and then we need to put Jesus in there and we need to walk in him and let those roots go deep in our soul. So, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, be, beware lest anyone cheat you through your philosophy or empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and power. That was a scripture that warns you about worldly counseling. Okay, so what does it mean to walk in him? Does it mean we walk around acting all holier than thou? Well, we can, but no, by, no, by all means, no, right? We are still in this flesh, body, and it's a battle, and but we have our tools. We have our armor. And we have the word. We must open up our toolbox and use it. Yes. Um, do we want to be an apprentice or a skilled workman? We are the deciding factor. It's up to us, once again. All right, which brings me to my ending of the message. Self-care. So self-care is a process. And for my own self, working, helping other people, listening to people, counseling people, I have to make sure that I do self-care for myself. And we all do, it's not just for Martin. So, <laughs> first we accept Jesus into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, and we allow Him to work in us so we can be transformed and be more like Him, and then we can take care of us so then we can take care of others. I've seen working in programs where people are just coming off of drugs and getting their life turned around and they're wanting to try to help everybody else and they still really haven't helped themselves. So the example I want to give you is like when you 
I know I've done a lot of traveling lately, the airplane. <laughs> so just like when we learned in the airplane, what do you do in case of an emergency? You put your oxygen mask on first so you can help save another life, right? So that's what we need to do with ourselves in our spiritual walk. And how do we do that? We reflect from his word and meditate on it daily. And we need to feed ourselves daily. And um, there's a difference between reading a book versus taking in the truth of the book with the Bible, right? And walk in him means we walk in his love, know who he is, and accept we are free from sin. And don't allow the condemnation to come back into our minds. And remember it's a battle. And continue to put on our armor. Another scripture, Psalms 32, 5. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my inequity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the inequity of my sin. And this is a little bit of a long scripture, but it's one I wanted to share. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the terror of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, evil shall not befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample un underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him. Amen. So deliverance is ongoing, and it's a spiritual battle. And keep your armor on. Keep in the word. And... Uh, the truth will set you free. Amen. And I have a song. It kind of goes with who I am, and I just liked it. So I thought we could just do it as a closing song. And I do have these if you guys want them. Open. And I really don't know the words. Celebrate that the highest. 